on to the second part then of the exercises today. Um, so now, so in this first part, you know, this, this was kind of simple, but um, in the end, the most key part about generating events in Jetscape. Um, now, what, what we want to do is uh, kind of build a little more realistic um, output here. So we actually bring things to a state where we can plot a specific observable. Um, and now mostly um, the Jetscape code itself kind of leaves this analysis part to you. I mean, it, it, there's this output file of, for example, the final state hadrons that we just generated. You know, this is something that, that um, I think all of you can uh, easily plot, you know, g parse the text information and make some plots. Um, but I did want to show uh, one example of how one could do this in a slight, slightly more uh, comprehensive way. Um, and so this part is really kind of to be taken as an example or illustration. Um, but we've heard in the past that this could be useful, especially for um, those experimentalists of you who are often interested in really just plotting specific observable out of Jetscape and you don't, uh, you want to kind of keep things as simple as possible. Um, so to do this, there, there is this external repository, which we asked you to download um, in the, the preparatory instructions um, called Jetscape-analysis. So this is actually not something officially part of Jetscape, but um, just an example really of how one can uh, analyze this Jetscape output files um, into some observable. So the, the code will actually contain two different um, pieces. It contains a generation script. So this is basically allows you to generate, say, a complete set of PT hat bins, which often uh, one wants to do when building an actual observable. Um, so instead of, say, by going in by hand and, you know, specifically modifying the PT hat bin and then running code and modifying and running, this just is something that automates that for you. And then the second piece will be to analyze those output files. So we will have a list of Jetscape output files that were generated in a set of different PT hat bins. And then we'll produce from those, we'll kind of loop over those files and merge them together and then produce, um, produce a physics observable. So, okay, so now um, we, we're gonna shift slightly gears away from the Jetscape repository and into this Jetscape-analysis repository. Um, so I, I'd like you to open up this file, which is in Jetscape analysis slash config slash example dot YAML. So we change up a bit the, uh, the configuration formatting. So this is now a YAML format um, file, but it should be very intuitive uh, what, how to read or modify these things. So if you open that file, uh, it will look like something it looks something like this. There, there's a bit more um, below also what I show here. Um, so there, these are just configuration parameters for how to steer the running of Jetscape. So there's two things that I want you to pay attention to, um, the rest of which um, I'll kind of gloss over the details for now. Um, the first is this, there's a list uh, of PT hat bin edges that is shown here. So currently in the example, it's, a, it's just a bracketed list says 100, 150, 200. This is just the set of uh, uh, bin edges that will be generated when we, when we run this code in a moment. So this can be modified. One can put any, any numbers that you want into that list. And the second thing I want to point you to is at the, under this heading generation parameters, right below that, there's a path that's given um, to the Jetscape XML files. So there's an XML user file, which is set to this Jetscape user PP19. And this path, this is not something actually you would need to modify in this case, because in kind of the default path is the correct one. Uh, as long as you followed the, the preparation instructions. So let's, to, to take this for a spin, um, let's make a couple modifications here. So 
set this uh, this list of PT hat bins. Let's add let's add some more PT hat bins so that we can get. Um, I mean, we don't want to generate events for for hours now, but we still want something quick. But set the PT hat bins to this list um, that is shown here in the bold. Um, so that gives us seven or eight um, PT hat bins. Um, and uh, and once you've done that. Um, you also should open again the XML file, the user XML file. And I want you to make a couple of modifications. Uh, hopefully it's getting more intuitive now. Um, so the, the same PP19 user file. Um, let's add back the HEPMC writer instead of the ASCII writer. And let's increase the number of events a bit more. Let's set it to 500 events. Um, so I'll, I'll give you a moment to, to set those things. And um, I just, while, while you're working on that, um, I just point out that this, this code that we'll look at in this step of the examples, um, I won't go into a lot of detail about, but uh, it's more to kind of provide an out of the box example that works to generate an observable. And if you certainly don't have to use this if you're um, generating things yourself, it's just one option or illustration of how one could do that. Um, so for for kind of full details, you can uh, you'll need to take a bit deeper look into these things. So for now, I just kind of give you what is necessary to run this um, without showing you the guts of how this code is actually going to work. So okay, so so once you've done these two things, so you modified this example.yaml file to add in a few more PT hat bins, and you open your Jetscape PP19 XML file and you set it to be a HEPMC writer and 500 events. Um, now we can go ahead to generate events. So there is a particular script that we will run, which will um, it will automatically take care of generating events for each of those PD admins that we specified. So this script is located again inside the Jetscape-analysis repository. Um, and then the full path is Jetscape analysis dash slash generate slash Jetscape underscore events dot py. So th this is some machinery that's written in Python, um, which uh, I'm sure to some of you is, uh, are familiar with Python and some are not, um, that's okay. Uh, won't actually need to edit really any Python code today. Um, if you do find this useful, I, I think you should also find it relatively easy and straightforward to, to pick up. Um, so we just want to run this script to start generating events. So from inside your Docker container, first uh, change directory to this uh, path here, Jetscape analysis uh, slash Jetscape analysis slash generate. And then there's a command here. Um, you should run Python and then this script Jetscape underscore events dot py. And you should give it two command line arguments. So there is a dash C argument, which uh, you pass the location of this example.yaml file. So you can just copy that path uh, from here. And there is a dash O uh, option, which is just, it's going to be a directory where your output will be stored. So you, you can, um, uh, I, I highly suggest to just use the one that I pasted here, but in principle, you can set this to anything you want. Um, let me also just note that if you try to like directly copy paste this full code from the PDF, you might want to beware about the line breaks uh, can kind of uh, sometimes this, you'll have it enter the code only after the first option. So make sure that both the dash C and dash O options get entered when you run this. Um, so so that's, that's it for the command that we want to run. And what it should do, um, you, you should see uh, some printouts Dave. that... Uh, Yes. So one student would like you to go back to the previous slide. Sure. Any questions there? Well, 
I think you should move on. Yeah. I've moved on. We don't hear a question, so go, go. Okay, on. great, great. Um, yeah, and please, please follow up in the Slack also if there is something unclear. So, um, Okay, I see also a question, how to add a HEPMC writer. This is uh, what we just did also in the first section um, where you open the Jetscape um, PP19 XML file. And we first changed it from HEPMC to ASCII. Now you can change it back from ASCII to HEPMC. So, okay, so one, once you've run this script, you should see something get generated that looks like this. And so you can you can look at this you know outside of the Docker container if however you most like to browse files on your laptop. So here is just a snap screenshot of my uh, Finder window here, and I see that this generated uh, when I ran this script. It created for me a, a directory called Jetscape Analysis Output, and inside of here it created a, a set of different directories which the, the numbers here are just the index of the PT hat bin that we generated. So we generated uh, nine PT hat bins, it seems, from just labeled zero to eight. And in each of those folders, um, there's a few things that this machinery will write out for you. And this is, this is all kind of done under the hood. So um, you know, I won't go into the full detail of this, but um, the the XML files from Jetscape are copied over each time we we ran it, so you could, for example, open that and see that in PT app in zero we should see the Jetscape user file should contain the PT app in that we specified the lowest one, and you know PT app in eight for example will contain the highest PT app in in that configuration file. Just so you, if you look back later on this, you know what uh, what you generated. And there's also a log file. So the the output to the terminal that we used to see when we ran Jetscape in the first section today, um, this is just saved as a text file. So you can also open that and make sure, for example, that there weren't any error messages or that the code crashed or anything like this. Um, and then finally, we see a test out. .hepmc. So here's our hepmc output file. Um, and this exists now for each of these different directories, each of these different 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 uh, PT hat bin directories. Um, so at this point, I, I'd like to also ask another poll if people, so can, can we actually first reset the poll just to make sure we clear out the answers? It's reset. Thank you. Um, and then, so yeah, please enter yes if, if this uh, seems to work for you so far. And please enter no if you have some problem or if you need more time. So one thing to be aware of, which was also pointed out in the question is um, when we specify this list of PT hat bins to run and we specify um, basically back here, uh, we specify um, a user XML file, this PP19. So this machinery, what it does when it loops through these PT hat bins is it, it just goes in and changes the value of that PT hat bin and then generate some events, and then changes the value again and generates more events. So it, it, it will change the values uh, of the PT hat parameters in your Jetscape user file. So if, if you want to go back later after you've run this, you would want to change those back to whatever you want. Um, but if you run this script, say, a second time again, then it will again just over, it will set automatically the PT hat bins to whatever you specify in this list here. There is a question if you have time to explain again which command one has to run, if you have time for that. Uh, yes, yes, no, it seems. So I, I see a few questions popping up on Slack. So let's let's um, take a few minutes to try to try to get these answered and get people caught up. So the the main command that you should run to generate these events is you you first want to 
um, change directory to this path that is listed here, Jetscape analysis slash Jetscape underscore analysis slash generate. And then in that directory, you should see a file called Jetscape underscore events dot py. Um, and so when um, to, to call this script, you should call um, all together. So in a single line of code, you should then enter this, this whole set of commands. So Python Jetscape events dot py and dash C and then copy this example, that YAML path here, and dash O with the directory here. Um, so so this, um, this will also take some time to run the events. So it, um, it takes, uh, it, it will depend also, of course, how fast or slow your laptop may be. Um, if, it's, if it seems excruciatingly slow to you, um, so the, the standard out that you see, it should say, you know, generating PT hat bin one or generating PT hat bin two and so on. If you're stuck on say the first PT hat bin since, you know, we've been talking, then uh, I would recommend to, instead of running 500 events in your XML file, change that to maybe 100 events or some smaller number. Um, we of course can't run kind of high statistics comparisons now. So, um, you, you may have to adapt that a little bit um, to get it to run within uh, within a couple of minutes. Um, so let, let's let's give a few minutes still for for your code to finish running um, and to generate these. And let's see if there are some other questions uh, in the meantime. Um, so let's see. Right, so there, there was a question about how fast the code should be. Um, right, so um, as said, this this uh, it, it should take overall to run all of these PD admins. I mean, for me, it took uh, maybe a few minutes. Um, it it can be faster or slower depending on your machine. And the, the easiest way to change that to speed things up is just. Uh, make a smaller number of events in each PT hat bin. You also, you're free to make fewer PT hat bins as well. I mean, so this, this example I just quickly made to get us some sensible looking physics observable at the end, um, but it's not, uh, it's not absolutely essential what specific bins or number of events that we run here. And um, to the chairs, how actually is our yes, no situation looking? We have 70 yeses, we have four noes, we have 173 people on the line. We have never had more than about 95 responses overall to the poll. So probably 40% of people are not responding either way. But we're getting more yeses ticking up. And we have three no's now, so it's getting better. Okay, great. Um, yeah, let's let's give it uh, just another minute or two. Um, but it sounds sounds like this is successfully working for most people, which is great. Uh, so that there is a question uh, whether the output file is created inside Docker. So this is a good question um, because it's this is a slightly confusing thing about Docker, how we've set this up, but very important. So this, this um, directory here, so on the current slide that I'm showing, for example, where we see 
directory for Jetscape and Jetscape analysis and these four directories here. Um, this, this whole directory where these are located is shared between uh, your laptop and the Docker container itself. So what that means is that you can access um, you can access all these files that we just generated either inside the Docker container or outside the Docker container. So if, for example, you might want to look into the log, one of the log files. Um, you can do that uh, just by opening your, your favorite text editor on your laptop. Um, you can do the same actually with the HebMC output. HebMC is just a, a text file um, in a particular format. Uh, but you, you can also uh, access them in the Docker container. So we are now at 91 yeses, but six noes. So the noes have gone up, but the yeses have gone up. And I think it looks like you have quite a few more slides. So maybe we, since most people are able to do it, we maybe proceed. Um, yeah, okay, I think that sounds good. Um, so I think we're on a, we're on a pretty reasonable schedule um, at the moment. Uh, so, so yeah, there's still a couple people having some uh, technical difficulties running this. Um, I would say just make sure, so these two, one thing I specify is these two commands I give you, the cd command and the python command are two separate commands, just to be clear. So you should first enter the first one and second, enter the second one. Um, but let's, let's uh, we'll follow up uh, with the TAs on Slack for those of you still having trouble. Um, in the meantime, let's push on a little bit. So we, we created now this output files for a set of different PT hat bins. And these output files, again, they contain the full information from the Jetscape event. Um, so what we want to do is actually have, a, have some code, which then will read those output files and take, uh, for example, only the final state hadrons, and then read in uh, the kinematics of those final state hadrons and build, for example, a jet cross section. So there is, um, in this repository, there is code to do this. Um, and the, the details I'm really not going to go through um, today just for, for lack of time. Um, but you can, you can uh, take a look um, at this example file, at this, this path here. So, so open up this file. Um, it's, again, in this Jetscape analysis repository. And the path is located here, Jetscape analysis slash analysis slash analyze events example. And uh, what this does, so I, I don't expect you to understand everything about this, but rather just get a brief sense of what this might be doing. Um, this has a few functions inside, and I just highlight a couple of the important ones here. It has a function um, called initialize user output objects. This is a function which you just create some histograms. Um, so this is uh, written again all in Python, but using root uh, from from the Python interface. And so the syntax um, is, uh, I think, familiar at least in a rough sense to to many of you. Maybe not all of you, which is fine. Um, so here, for example, we create a histogram of the the hadron PT. Okay, so we're going to fill a histogram with hadron PT. And we create also some jet histograms. So we actually loop over some different jet radius. And we create just an empty histogram for the jet PT. Then there's another function later, which is called analyze event. And so this is something that this code will run over, it will kind of handle the looping over these Jetscape events for you from the output file. And it will um, execute some code for each of those events. Um, and so roughly what this does is it, it has some functionality to get those hadrons from the event. 
um, and it has some functionality to fill various histograms. Uh, so again, I, I don't show all the information here, um, but the, these histograms that we created in this initialize function, uh, we then loop through and we fill those histograms here. So there is, for example, we, we run fast jet to cluster jets together from those final state hadrons. Um, and those, I again, don't expect you to follow all the full details of this, but rather just to have some broad sense. Um, and if you're curious, um, you can certainly look uh, in further detail at this um, and also ask questions in the Slack after this session if you, if you want to know more. Um, so now you can, you can close that file now. We don't have to actually modify it in any way. Um, and now instead, uh, let's open a different file. The, we actually opened this bit earlier before we generated the events. So go ahead and open the file, Jetscape analysis slash Jetscape analysis slash config slash example.py. So that's the same file where we set the different PD hat bins when we were generating events. And so at the bottom of this file now, there's a section called analysis parameters. So th these are the ones that are relevant for this stage of the, um, for analyzing the, the output of those Jetscape events. Uh, so there's a few things that we want to modify here, actually, which I highlight. Um, so there's a parameter called n event max, which by default is set to 100, but let's bump that up to 500. Um, or if you ran some different number of events, um, uh, then you should set that to whatever maximum number of events you ran. Um, ah, okay, I, I see actually, yes, there's a typo. Thank you for pointing this out. This should be example.yaml not example.py, I apologize for that. Um, so yeah, example.yaml should be the file that you open. Um, the exact same one as a few slides earlier when we modified the PT hat bins. So, so once, you, once you open that file um, and you change the number of events, uh, max, this is just, you know, it will cut, the code will cut off after hitting this number n event max. So we want to run over our full set of, um, uh, ah, okay, I see actually I made some other, <laughs> uh, I apologize for, for this path. I, I seem to have completely botched it. So it should, um, it should read Jetscape. Well, I'm just gonna go back a, a slide to show you what is the correct path. So the file that you should open is Jetscape analysis slash config slash example dot yaml. So the, the path that I wrote on slide 19 is a bit, uh, has a couple of mistakes in it. Um, so, okay, so opening that file, um, we want to set the number of events and then there's two other things that we want to set. We want to set uh, this, this field called scale histograms we want to set that from false to true, set that to true, as well as the merge histograms. Let's also set that to true. So what these options do, if we set them to true, they will, uh, when we run the analysis code in the next slide, um, this will, uh, for each of the Jetscape output files that we generated, it will essentially scale uh, the results according to the cross section of the PT hat bin that we generated. And then it will also merge together those eight or nine different PT hat bins into a single root file. Um, so go ahead and make those two changes. There's some other parameters here, which uh, in principle you can also change to your liking, but let's just leave them fixed here for now. Um, so let, let me, uh, before, running the code. Let's see if there are any unclear points or questions that have come up since I see the Slack has been a bit more busy. So some people seem to get, uh, a couple of people seem to have some issue um, with maybe the import, some import statement from Python. Um, so if you're if you're running things in Docker, um, what what you need? Um, well, so I, I think actually let's let's wait a second to to come back to that. Um, 
So I think actually what I, what I want to do before pausing again is, is to tell you what is the actual command to run to analyze the events. Um, and so we'll again at the um, take a small break after running this to allow everybody to catch up. Um, but the main command to analyze these events now, you want to enter inside the Docker container. Um, and then um, we want to change, oops, change directory to this uh, Jetscape analysis. And then this is an important step. You need to call uh, this command here, source init.sh. This will set up um, just a little bit of initialization environmental variables to, um, to load some code that we'll use in this analysis. Again, this is kind of happening under the hood, so you don't really need to um, try to understand the details now. And then once you run that, uh, that, that should take you know, really no time to, to execute. Um, then change directory to this jetscape underscore analysis slash analysis. And then we're going to run this command here, Python analyze events example. And there are three command line arguments here, a dash C, dash I, and dash O. And so you, you should be able to copy um, exactly those, those commands, those, those command options uh, from the slide here. The dash C is telling the path of that example.yaml file where we were specifying the pt happens and number of events and so on. The dash i um, is telling us where to find the Jetscape output events that we generated in the previous step. And the dash o is telling us where to actually write the new output files that we will generate um, from those Jetscape events. So it, it will generate an output root file. Um, okay, so let's let's give people a few moments to to run this. So what what you should what you should start to see um, if, if this is working is you should see in each directory uh, where these output events were generated, you should see a file appear that is called analysis results root. And eventually, when the when the whole script is done running. Um, you should see also appear a file called analysis results final dot root, which appears in the same directory as um, uh, as this uh, as all of your PD happen directories. Yeah. And so this file is is just the merged result of all these different nine PD happens um, together. Okay, and, and eventually once once that appears, it, it might take a, a, a minute or so for that to run. Um, you can take a look at this, this root file um, that you have. So this is easiest uh, done from outside the Jetscape uh, Docker container. Um, it assumes you have root installed on your machine, which, um, which was showing up in the, um, in the, the preparation instructions. Um, if not, you also you can open the root file in the Docker container, but you can't really browse it in this graphical user interface. Um, but if you uh, if you uh, get to successfully generate this this root file and you open it, you should see some collection of histograms inside. And so, for example, you can look at the histogram that is uh, hjetpt r zero point four scaled. So there's a suffix scaled at the end, which tells that these are uh, the, the PT hat cross sections have been scaled to create a, um, a full observable. And so the statistics here are you know, not, not incredible because we just ran this in a few minutes, but um, this is a jet cross section that we, that we just generated uh, with Jetscape in PP collision. Um, so uh, let's let's first of all clear out if if the chairs again can clear out the um, the yes no responses. Yep, done. Perfect. Thank you, Christine. And then uh, so once once you get this done successfully, if you see that you generate this analysis results final, and you can open that root file and you see some histograms that show you something uh, reasonable then please enter yes. 
if um, it will give a couple of minutes. Uh, if you need more time, please enter no. We're at 26 to five. So I think um, the, the people who are not quite done yet are taking a little bit of, are seeing if they can figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that sounds good. That sounds good. Yeah, this, this might take a couple of minutes. But in the meantime, I'm going to go back just uh, for those having problems, you know, the, the most confusing part might be exactly. I think there's a request for you to go back one slide. Yes, yes. So now I think it is back on the that slide. And let, let me rem remind also that the slides are posted on the Indico page, so you can also um, browse them yourself. We're at 39 to eight. So I think this one's taking people a little bit longer. Right, that is, uh, that's okay. And let me add one thing that I see is that we have participants responding and helping out other participants, which is really great. So thank you guys very much. That's, that's helping everybody. Yes, definitely. And also finding my typos is very helpful. One other thing that I'll that I'll highlight here is that um, when we edited this this example configuration file, um, okay, this is the slide with the incorrect path, but there is um, there is a field here which says reader as well, which is set to HEPMC. So if um, th this uh, this expects then that the output files that we generated are HEPMC, so that in our XML file from Jetscape, we have a HEPMC writer. If instead we had an ASCII writer, so that when we looked um, when we looked at the events that were generated, if they said test out dot, uh, dat instead of test out dot um, this this analysis framework will still work, but you would need to change this reader uh, option from HEPMC to ASCII all in lowercase. Sixty-one to five, so the yeses are ticking up and the noes are about static. Okay, good, good. Let's give just a few more minutes. Christine, there is some request for breakout rooms. Have you seen this on the in the Zoom chat? Ah, uh, sorry, I did not. Um, yes, I will. I will put him in the breakout room with Chuck. Was there more than just the one most recent? 
just now. I think that's all, as far as I can tell. So another thing I'll just mention, um, once you produce this, this analysis results final dot root, um, it may, what you run to actually examine this root file uh, might depend a bit on how you have installed root on your machine. So what I've written here is specifically if you are outside the Docker container, but you have root installed on your laptop, and this is, I, I believe this is a specific command to root six. So if you're using something, okay, it may even be some version of root six that, uh, that this got implemented called root browse. This just automatically starts root and opens it. You know, it's called T browser to examine this file. If that command for you somehow doesn't work, um, you can also just type, um, uh, just type root itself into the command prompt and that will open a, um, open a root session for you. And then you can, um, well, so actually th this, I think probably easiest is for these details to look into the Slack. There has been some discussion um, of uh, if, if someone has an issue with the root browse, there's some um, specific code that you can run that I think is easier to look there than me to tell you in words. Um, so if that root browse command itself doesn't work, uh, take a look onto the Slack uh, for an alternative. If you don't have root installed on your laptop, um, you won't be able to inspect graphically this, um, this histogram. You can still open the root file in the Docker container, um, but you, you don't have the graphical user interface possibility. So here I, I, I won't go into more details of how, um, how to examine that. You can follow up uh, kind of online how to um, examine a root file for that. But yeah, let me just emphasize this, this, what I've written here is taking place outside the Docker container and assumes you have a kind of reasonably uh, recent or not super old installation of root there. We are at 76 to four. The nose have gone down. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Slowly and steadily. Perfect. Um, okay, so I think, uh, I think we should go ahead and move on then. Um, so those few people that are still working, uh, we can follow up uh, continuing after the session also on Slack and the TAs will all do our best to um, continue to troubleshoot any problems or errors that you get. Um, so the last thing I just want to mention about this is um, this was, you know, a bit of a black box, but the nice thing is we have, uh, you know, today from scratch generated jet, full jet cross section from, uh, from Jetscape. And so if, uh, if you like, you can also easily customize this Python script, analyze events example. You can create any histogram you want and say code in your new observable that you want to store. Um, to how, however you like. Uh, so this, this will take some, you know, you sitting down to, to code and take a few minutes to understand what this script is actually doing in more detail, but you can, with pretty minimal work, uh, you could create any observable that you would like. So that, that's just an example um, for you to be aware of in case you find it helpful. Okay, so, so let's, um, in our last half hour or so today, um, Let's go through one last piece, uh, which is a very, very basic example of how to implement a custom module. So this, this is um, 